Well, you see this here, and this is one of the best things about working in a nice old chemistry department, is that every now and again, people go shuffling through cupboards which haven't been opened in years and years and years and find some little treasures. So this is one of those. This is uh, digitalinium poison. Um, and it's uh, in this really unusual, presumably, I don't know, early 20th century sample vial here. So this is, uh, well, we'll talk about this in uh, a little while when we go upstairs to the teaching lab. But uh, uh, it's not a lot in there, but that is, I would guess, about half a gram. And that would be enough to kill quite a few people. So uh, this is uh, something to be handled with care. Don't go giving Neil any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the exact LD50. I haven't looked it up, but uh, it's uh, in, and to be fair, it's been in there for some time. So uh, may have lost some potency, but who knows? Uh, I, I certainly will want to test that. So now this is the so-called aglycone. What does aglycone mean? So this oxygen over here, that would have had three more sugar molecules on it uh, and I simply didn't have enough carbons in my molecular model kit to put those on. Um, those are there to give it solubility. So you can see this backbone here, this 6665, 6665 system here, that is the backbone uh, which we call steroids. So this belongs to a cl general class of compounds called steroids. And in particular, this is a cardiovascular steroid. So this works by making your heart pump harder, but slower. And in fact, it's the contraction of the heart muscle that this helps. So it enables people with heart attacks to, well, it's still used uh, for, for people who've had heart attacks, have heart disease, to help their heart become more strong and enable them to survive. And there's a nice story here. So this was uh, first found, this comes from foxgloves, by a doctor called uh, William Withers, I believe his name was, operating in the, the Birmingham general area back in the 17, late 1700s. And one of his patients came in, he had a real bad heart problem. But sadly, the doctor, uh, he really had nothing that he could do to help this guy. Uh, it turns out this guy ca came back a few months later perfectly okay. And what he'd done is he'd gone to a local healer, um, sort of traditional folk medicine person, and they'd given him a tincture that he, he had uh, taken. So the doctor went and found this lady that, that had come up with this, this traditional medicine. And although she's very unwilling to give away secrets, eventually he found out that foxgloves were part of the, uh, the overall mixture, the, the potion that she concocted. Um, so what he did is he, he went, to, got loads of foxgloves, he dried the leaves, and over the next 10 years, he managed to, to get the right dose uh, and administered this, and this then became uh, a, a, a real medicine which could help people with heart disease and it's still used today. Digitoxin is is one of those medicines today that's based on on this and you can tell from the name this is a toxic molecule. Uh, so if you get the dose wrong and it, the, the dose that you need to help someone is really small, really tiny, 0.3 milligrams per day typically. Uh, so if you get the dose wrong it, it will completely arrest your heart and, and that, that is very likely to be fatal, certainly back in the late 1700s. Ventricular tachycardia, digitalis. But if you get the dose right, it gives it that extra pull. It enables it to be a much more efficient pump. It's slower, but it's a much harder pump and you regain that blood flow. It does eventually shrink the size of the heart. I don't know why that is. And the key thing is about this molecule are two things. One is this ring up here. So this is thought to be uh, the active component. Quite how it works, I, I don't know, but I'm sure uh, there are medics around that, that 
do. What is that called, that little... So this is a, a Furino ring. So this is a lactone, this uh, piece here. You can see it's like a, like a carboxylic acid, but it's now joined in as part of a ring. So that's the lactone. And this here is actually an alkene. So you can only... On, there's no uh, double bond here, uh, but it is a double bond. So you can see it's just got one hydrogen off it as, as opposed to two that the alkane pieces have. And the other key bit is this hydroxyl down here, and that makes it far longer lasting in the body. Now, the two other ones of these come from the foxgloves. One has another hydroxyl up here and another one up here, and they're not that useful, it turns out. Um, so because it's easier to make this, or perhaps it's probably still made from foxgloves, it's much easier to plant some foxgloves and get the leaves than it is to make this, because as you can see, this is a really complicated looking molecule. So you said that, you know, you told me about the active ingredient here and the active ingredient here. Couldn't you synthesize something that has that and that and not have all this sh elaborate shrubbery, or is that yeah. Im still important? So that, that's a good question. So in, in the case of morphine, you can strip the molecule down hugely and still retain that activity. Uh, in this case, though, I, I, I can't say I, I know the answer to that. Um, my guess is possibly um, as long as you're keeping the orientation of these pieces, then that's fine. So the, orienta so the orientation of them and the distance apart and that sort the of thing could apart. be dependent on all that. C certainly these rings here and as you can see it's, it's really rigid molecule it, it doesn't flop about so these are held in a, in a certain orientation so this can spin around but that's about it the rest of this is completely rigid like a ladder all the steroids have this type of structure they have these methyl groups here um, and presumably there's some importance to that uh, cholesterol is a, a one that you may have heard of that's used in various places. This, all these carbons and hydrogens are really greasy, so they get stuck in your lipid bilayers, and it's, that tends to be where, where cholesterol resides in, in your body. Uh, the, eight, the, the three sugars over here have lots of hydroxyls, and that helps, them be, helps the whole thing become more, much more water soluble. So then it can go around in your blood, go to the right places, go to your heart in particular, and start to, to do its good action. Boiling off. So we've got cut some sodium up. We had a big lump of sodium, cut some bits off that, and we're gonna put smaller chunks in. This is gonna go in there, and hopefully it will not be too vigorous a reaction. There you go, so you can see that blue color 